All right, so we're gonna talk about how we can style React components. And there are three methods that you should be aware of. The first one is inline styling. The second one is using CSS style sheets. And the third one is using modules. So let's get started with the very first one, which is inline styling. Let me briefly walk through what I have at the moment. On the right hand side, you can see the browser. On the left, you can see the usual index.html file with the div tag that we're going to be attaching our component to. And we also have this index.js file that I have prepared. And in here, you can see that I have this very simple function called function zero, my function zero, I mean. And all it does is, is return a JSX code, which says my function zero, and then hello world. And below that, we are simply rendering this individual function. So how can we apply some styling to this dull looking um, yeah, text on the right hand side? The way we can do that is we can go to this h1 tag over here and within the tag we're going to write the attribute style and we're going to set it equal to two sets of curly brackets. Now you're wondering why I might be using two sets of curly brackets over here because this expression over here is JSX code and when we add styling in line we want to add a Java script object. Now the first pair of curly brackets allows us to embed some JavaScript code into our JSX code. And the second pair of curly brackets allows us to embed a JavaScript object within JavaScript. And we want to have a JavaScript object in here. That is why we're using two pairs of brackets. And then I can go ahead and write something like color and set it equal to blue, for instance. And after I save this and refresh my browser, you can see that the text over here is turned blue. And um, I can go ahead and try that with any other color. So let's go ahead and try green and then save this. And if I rerun this, you can see that the text has now turned green. All right, so that is inline styling. Um, there is one more thing that I do want to mention at this point, which is oftentimes these CSS attributes that we commonly use have a hyphen. For example, when we use background color, we usually put a hyphen between background and color. Now that is not going to work uh, over here because remember that within this second pair of curly brackets, we are using a JavaScript object. And in JavaScript objects, uh, hyphens can be mistaken for minus signs. And so that won't work. So in order to mitigate that, we use camel case. So let me go ahead and write something um, along the lines of background color. And you can see over here that I'm using this camel case notation. And now if I go ahead and save this, you'll see that the background of the text has turned green. But if I were to use the common method that we would see in CSS by using this hyphen and try saving it, you can already see in the editor that I'm getting this red underline. And then if I run this in the React app in my browser, you can see that nothing appears because we're getting an error. So that is what you need to bear in mind whenever we have the CSS properties that we would usually use hyphens for, we need to change that and make it into camel case notation, which will then go ahead and work. So let's go ahead and now talk about the second styling method that we can use in React, which is by using CSS style sheets. In order to create a CSS style sheet, I'm going to open up the file tree that you can see over here on the left hand side. And within the source folder, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it index.css. And within this index.css file, I can simply go ahead and write some very basic CSS. I'm going to use a header tag and we're going to be styling the headers by giving them a color. And we're also going to give them a background uh, color. And let's say the color that we're going to give the text is going to be red. 
And besides that, we're going to make the background color be pink. And that's all we're going to have within this index.css file. And I can go ahead and close down the file tree. Then back in the index.js file, all I need to do is I need to import the style sheet that I just created by writing import. And then I'm going to write dot slash index.css. And once I save this, you will see something interesting happen on the right hand side of my browser. You're going to see that the uh, color of the text has been changed, but the background color has not. And the reason for that is because the styling of the background color over here that we have set in line is overriding what we've set within the CSS style sheet. So you can see that the priority of the inline styling is going to be higher. So if we go ahead and get rid of the inline styling over here and save this again, and then refresh the browser window, you can now see that we have exactly the styling that we wanted because that is exactly the styling which we have within our index.css file. The color of the text is red and the background color is pink. And I mean, I can add any other styling to this. So if I go ahead and take the body tag and then set the background uh, color of the body to blue, you will see that this will also apply throughout the entire uh, file over here. The last one that I want to show you is how we can use CSS modules. So let's take a look at how we can style our React application using CSS modules. To demonstrate this, I've created a very simple example that I hope you can follow along. So over here, you can see that I have a very simple function and all it does is it returns a piece of text that says my function zero, then colon, hello world. And in addition to that, I've created another function. It's my function one. And over here, it says my function one colon, hello world. I have gone ahead and imported this function and I am rendering both of them. And that is exactly why in the browser, it gives me the text of both of these individual functions. To create a CSS module, I can go ahead and create a new file. And when you create CSS modules, you need to make sure that after the name that you choose, for example, style, you need to write dot module, dot CSS. So make sure that you always include dot module dot CSS, but you can choose the name, which in this case is style freely. After that, I'm going to add a couple of lines of CSS over here. Let me just go ahead and write H1. And then I'm going to add a color, which is going to be blue. And I'm also going to add a background color back ground color and the background color is going to be pink and I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now you will see that as soon as I refresh the browser, nothing has happened yet. But if I go ahead and import this style module, for example, within this component over here, I am simply going to write import, then style from dot slash style dot module dot CSS. You can see in the browser window when I refresh that the styling that I've added to the module now applies globally to all the individual H1 tags. And we have one in the index file which you can see over here. And we also have one in the function one over here. And that is why all the text um, gets the styling, which is in this module. Now let's say that I would only want to apply the styling within this module to the my function one. So I only want to apply it to the component that is actually importing this style. And to do that, what I can do is I can use something like a class name. So I'm going to write dot header. 
And within the my function one file, I am going to write class name. And then I'm going to write the name. Uh, so I'm going to write style dot header. And I need to make sure that I'm using a pair of curly brackets. So let me just not get that wrong over here. And now if I go ahead and save this and refresh the browser window, you can see that the CSS, which is within the module over here, only applies to the component that is actually importing the style uh, from the module. So now over here, if I try and do the same thing by taking the class name, copying it, and trying to add it to the file that does not have the module imported, you will see that it's already complaining with this red underline. And if I go ahead and refresh this, you can see it entirely broke down. All right, so I hope this gives you a little bit of an idea of how we can use um, modules, how we can use inline styling, and how we can use style sheets to style our React applications. If this video helped you out, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe to this channel, and we'll see each other in the next video.